coach, just to Sean Reed from The Athletic. Uh, obviously, this upcoming week is a really crucial one with you, you know, having to make the cut to hit three spots next weekend. Uh, just what's your thought process going into this week? What are you looking for from players? Well, a lot of the water's under the bridge. This will be a big tape for us to get back to the office and study. A lot of situations covered today. We put some uh, backup players with the starters. Uh, we put some starters in with the second group to see how they'd react. Um, but to answer your question, uh, this is a, a, a time where everything is winding down. So we're going to have to meet as a staff, make some tough decisions. It's been a very competitive camp. All right. You guys just jump in there. Ed, go ahead. John, uh, it's Ed Graney from the paper. Um, when you look back, as crazy as kind of this been with COVID, in your mind, did you get everything you wanted to accomplish, or was this just kind of a strange year where uh, you, you could have, you wanted to do more or less? Take us through like what this camp was compared to others. Well, it was uh, a, a one adjustment. You have to adapt day after day after day. Uh, number one, uh, to the weather. We were supposed to be in Napa, California, where we're uh, accustomed to a certain weather. You know, being in the desert's different. Uh, we practiced at 7.30 a.m. I don't know any team in the history of the NFL that has practiced at 7.30 a.m. to beat the heat. Uh, normally, we have 90 players at the start of camp. Uh, we started training camp with 80. Uh, when you get eight or nine guys hurt, um, you got to really be careful. You had no preseason games, so there was no downtime for some of the veteran players to get off their legs. In years past, they've had three days off during the week uh, with the travel and with the preseason game and a day off. So it's been one uh, adapt adaptation after another. And um, we had no spring practice. So we had to fast track a lot of these players. And we didn't even know a lot of these guys. It was the first time I met Corey Littleton was when he uh, walked in in his uniform with a helmet on the first day. So. We made great progress. I'm really proud of our coaches. I'm really proud of our veteran players. And uh, we have some emerging young guys, I think, that this franchise will be proud about. Now, how beneficial will it be to have those extra practice squad spots that you have as a result of the virus that we got this year? I think it'll be um, important, uh, obviously, as a contingency plan. if. God forbid we do get another case of that COVID in our building. But, um, you know, it helps practices. You know, you have to service each other. You have to emulate the opponent. And to have a number of players that can help us do that will certainly help in our preparation. And um, like I said, it will also give us a contingency plan if uh, we're stricken with a bad case of the, of the virus. John, where are you? roughly two weeks away from uh, the start of the season. Uh, do you feel like you guys are closing in on where you need to be? Um, or does that seem too close at this point uh, for the Carolina Panthers in a couple of weeks? Yeah, I'm not going to give anybody any billboard material. You know, we're a young team, and um, we're improving. Our guys are working hard. I think you've seen that yourself. Uh, our young draft choices, a couple of them have taken steps forward. A couple of them we're still waiting on. But um, we are getting better. And um, I'm proud of the way our guys are, are working together on the practice field every day. Coach uh, Willie Ramirez with the Associated Press. Can you hear me, Coach? Yes. OK. Um, I'm just curious, was there anything coming into training camp in terms of units or specific positions that you were highly concerned about and it turned out to be a pleasant surprise uh, with the progression that, that you saw? I'm not going to say anything, unfortunately. Uh, no one knows unless I tell them. So, uh, you know, we don't have access to study anybody else's players, honestly. Uh, so why, why should we go out and tell anybody who's doing well and who isn't? Uh, one of the things you got to be careful of right now is what you say. And um, we're just going to kind of keep uh, uh, our lips tight and say we've had a very competitive camp and um, we're seeing progress. John, between the, uh, the pandemic and all this, the social injustice protests, these, are, these aren't distractions. They're life and death situations. And I'm just kind of curious on how, you've, as a coach, you navigate all this because you know, teams want to focus in training camp, but there are real things going on 
that they that they need to deal with outside of it. Yeah, I think that's the number one thing right now, Jerry, is um, looking into every man's you know well-being. They have families, moms and dads, and wives and kids, and you know friends. You know, I'm worried about this virus. You know, I I tell you, I know people that have lost their job over this virus. People that are struggling right now, and um, there's a lot of hatred out there. Uh, and and it, it really concerns me. And I pray that everybody can open their heart and get on the same team, politically, socially, in all ways. And I, I told our team, our, especially our leadership, after visiting with them, I want them to take tomorrow off. I'm going to give them a portion of Sunday off to research what's really going on and, and educate themselves on where we are. And when we do come back together as a 53-man team, uh, you'll see the Raiders are going to do something to to make the life better for somebody. We're gonna we're gonna make an impact, not just protesting and not just tweeting. We're gonna do something as a football team, and we're gonna prove it. So uh, the big thing is get away from the game here for a little bit, gather your thoughts, do some research. Don't make an emotional statement. Uh, make an educational one, and uh, I think our players are excited to do that. Anything more for Coach, guys? Okay. Hey John, what's the uh, status of uh, Mariota? I know you missed practice the last couple of days. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to be okay. He's going to be out probably for another three or four days, but he'll be back on the field, I think, by the middle to the end of next week. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.